nice spot. The Lehigh Bridge, uh, the one on like Kensington Ave, is like, once you go past there, it's like, you really can't walk up there with a camera like this. Someone is for sure take it. <laughs> Watch out for the needles now. I grew up in like Frankfurt area, lived in Kensington for a while, like from Indiana, and went to Frankfurt High School. Rode the fucking L and the fucking 66 and the 56 my whole miserable fucking life. Like, uh, but I mean, I, I haven't been anywhere where I felt more comfortable. I mean, I guess that's pretty average, but it's like for such a shitty, like depressing, dark fucking city, like, you, you know, like walking around here, it's just like, you, you, it's just bleak. It smells terrible. Dead dog. dark city but I mean like it's been amazing for like inspiration you know it's like how do you not draw out like any kind of like sadness in this fucking place such a fucking tight LP. Tomorrow is good. Yeah. That's one thing we're thinking of. Tired of tomorrow. It's uh, equally grim, right? Yeah. Bleak. Tired, Tired of tomorrow. Is so fucked up. Huh? It's actually so fucked yeah. up. Yeah. But I was just thinking, I was like, it's the, the that melody for that song is like, it's when you're tired of tomorrow on the inside. Just to me it's a sound. Yeah, yeah I like that. Oh, look good, like on the back of shirts, really big. <laughs> Spreading the good word. <laughs> Tell me you want to see a prodigy play a piano. to do something different than have another boring guitar song. So we made a boring piano song instead. Right? Yep. All we tried. Basically along that line, yeah. But it's not really worked out completely, but we got an idea what we would do. Like, I haven't, I haven't played it since last night, so I'm probably gonna fuck up, but let's see. It was something along the lines of like. for sure gonna be A song, uh, a song, and in the, in the, I didn't really have words to it, but I was like, I had a vocal melody, in. and I kept saying like, tired of tomorrow. I wrote like a thing about it, like moving my move to LA, and how like horrible of a mistake it was to be in that fucking place. And then I'm like, I wrote about how I'd come back to Philadelphia to just be like back in this like miserable fucking city too. And now I'm moving to New York. This is gonna be another fucking terrible decision. So it's just like, you know, I wrote the song just about that, like how I'm just like, I don't even want to wake up anymore, I'm like fuck it, all of this. That's what the record's gonna be about. <laughs> Self-loathing and fucking prima donna suicidal threats.
some of the songs I, I, I would gen like legitimately just if I had to do vocals on a song like over and over I would just be like in a terrible mood just from having to hear it like over and over again. and it's sad it's dark and it's sad it's it's it, it man i can't i i wouldn't be able to read those lyrics over and over and over again just hearing them you know uh gets me bummed out in the coolest way it's so somber and isn't it such a shame too heavy for the lightness no, the lightness in the rain that's All it our words are wasted we're gonna have to get down there <laughs> You got it, man. It's not Something like that. That's that, the, the beginning. That's your voice. That's a voice. Yeah, we pretty much have the whole company riding on nothing. Um, it's. It's one of those bets where you know we, we decided that like in the future of the company, we wanted to do something bold. We wanted to really uh, put it all on black kind of and let it ride. And you know nothing's really the band out of all the bands in the current musical climate. They're the only ones I felt comfortable really betting that kind of um, time, money, energy, resources, everything, um, reputation, you know everything on the line for this band. Just it's been a long time since I felt that confident about anything. The intro I have is like kind of like generic -ish. it's just, just like kind of like going to be like real quiet vocal like It's hard to keep making like distorted like heavy songs that are sad You know it Starts to get to a point where you can't do the same thing again I mean it's cool that like now like we can just do whatever we want You know I mean we always did but like now it's literally like well, we already got paid for this record. Someone's paying for it. You're filming it. And we can just do whatever we want. If it sucks, it's on everybody else now. We'll just start a new band and quit. It's like, how pissed off would Jeff be if you heard that? <laughs> I think, you know, it's just, it's all gonna sound big. It's uh, bigger than anything they've ever done. It's gonna be wide um, and it's gonna be dark. And yeah, but I think it's just gonna be really dense, you know, even from the demos that we tracked. Uh, I think we all saw the vision already. Um, but it's getting there. I think mean, by the end of today, we'll hear, we'll hear the first song done. And that's another reason why uh, it's really fun to go a song at a time, because by the end of every day, everyone's stoked. Instead of like, oh shit, we just hear scratch guitars and drums for the first week, you know what I mean? By the end of every day, we hear a fucking song, and everyone's just amped, you know? Oh, that's nice, dude. Holy shit. It's not very photogenic. <laughs> it kind of just looks like a black. Big black ball. It doesn't really fucking like music. He's more into politics and books. Fine art. <laughs> I'm getting my ass beat, Don. It took me like an hour to get the first verse, and I finally got it. And then we're like, all right, moving along. And Will went to tune the snare drum, and he noticed the bottom head was broken. And we are like, oh, fuck. And he found another head. He put it on and was like, yo, now the snare is going to sound different. So you got to redo everything we just did. We're going to do the same punch. Same punch. Kyle's getting drilled. <laughs> Dude, I mean, he was making it seem like this was going to be the easy one. The overall like dynamic of the record, we wanted to keep it like, you know, heavy, and keep a lot of like uh, melancholy themes. And I think 
we actually ended up going to the extreme in both directions now that I hear the record back. So I'm pretty happy with it. This one just, to me, seems like way more of a mature record, way less, I don't know, it's like, way less like atmospheric. I mean, it still has atmospheric parts, but it's not like everything drowned in reverb and everything like as wet as possible and as like aired out. It seems like more like a rock record, you know, more just like a, yeah, I guess just like a solid rock record, more serious. So, so like, <laughs> just <laughs> Okay, so, uh, <laughs> Make us look like we got, got, a, wait, you got some 16th notes there. And then it goes to some 16s, yeah. like last measure. Well, mess it up. All, all right. right, all right. I'm gonna have to whack it with the book. I don't want to be whoops. It's pretty different. It's, it's a nothing record for sure, but it's, it's, uh, it's definitely not a shoegaze record. I mean, regardless if you thought our last, whatever the last stuff is or isn't, but uh, this one definitely isn't. It's uh, I don't know, just it's, it's uh, it's a, it sounds like that. <laughs> That's the knife that uh, Sid Vicious stabbed Nancy with, and then it says like a part of it. I think it says like. Bury me with my baby, which is like what Sid Vicious wrote in his like. Well, he had a basically a suicide note in his in his pocket when they found him dead. Well, that's what they think was the suicide note. Either way, it's a really poetic thing to just imagine it happening that way. So. Nothing's ever is. Nothing's ever as, you know, as cool as it seems, ever. Just like, I kind of, I know it's like, pretty like, I, mean, it's like I haven't heard anything from the new record yet. The last thing I heard is their cover of the Nirvana song. So, uh, yeah, this is all new, all brand new for me. Can you play it, we'll play like the third and fourth and just turn it down a tiny bit. You know, I, I have a really amazing partner who's like kind of like been uh, the, the person who put all the resources into this project and he said sometimes in order to really pave the way for like a bright future you need to be willing to bet on something, you know, to lose it all if you were wrong. He's like, but how much do you believe in yourself? How much do you believe in, you know, what you like? And so I just sort of realized, yeah, like it's, it's about time for me to find out. Can I just put all my money where my mouth is and, and come out ahead? And I think in this case, you know, I'm really willing to risk uh, risk it all on this band. I think they're just, uh, I think they're really, you know, once in a very long time, a band like nothing comes along.
level, man. <laughs> We're right. good. There's right. nothing that's supposed to happen with this band. We're not, no one's like destined for anything. It's, everything is random. So like, you know, it's like not, we're not like we're supposed to go on tour and achieve great success. It's like whatever happens, happens. And, you know, there's moments where we're happy with things. And then there's moments that everything's awful, but there's no rhyme or reason to any of it. It's just, it's just happening or, you know. It's chaos and you know we're, we try to roll with it as best as we can. Martin Screlli is the CEO of Turing Pharmaceuticals that just recently purchased a drug known as Daraprim and raised the price from $13.50 per tablet to a whopping $750 per tablet. Now this is a drug that's supposed to treat those who have a parasitic infection. Screlli it turns out was a silent partner in a minor punk label called Collect Records. Second, he's second leader. Get Jeff Rickley said some really nice things, really genuine things about like believing in nothing and believing in the music and and stuff. So uh, I kind of just you know rolled the dice with it and uh, you know put my faith in it and uh, said you know we were just going to do it that way. Everything is going really well until um, I get a call from my friend uh, who happens to be HIV positive and um, he uh, was just like, dude, what is going on? I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, I'm pretty sure this is the guy that like is backing your label with Jeff. And I was like, what is it? And he's like, I'll send you the link. Like he's like raising the prices on medicine and stuff. So I was just like. All right, well, I knew he, Jeff had a backer, and, and from what I knew, he was just a, an, a sharp, young invest, investment guy. I hit Jeff up, and I was just like, dude, like, this is fucking insane. This is too much. And he's like, just give me a day. Like, I stayed up till like five in the morning, like, just reading. And I was like, he's like, give me a day, wait till tomorrow. Like, and I, you know, I respect Jeff, because I know he didn't know any of this shit either. And Norman obviously didn't either. And, uh, I was like, okay, I gave him that. And then, you know, I woke up a couple hours later because I was really stressed about it. And I, I just had to make a statement on like our, sorry, Facebook page or whatever that I wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna release any music that in any way, and as small shape form profit this fucking guy, you know, uh, I just, I just couldn't, couldn't let myself do that, so. Uh, the Washington Post hit me up at like 1.30 a.m. last night and, and me and Michael just smoked a, a giant joint. I was drinking red wine all night. And um, I was like, he's like, can we, can we talk a few words? I was like, yeah, I was like, uh, can we just do it early in the morning? Cause I was like, I guess I probably shouldn't fuck this up and say something stupid. But he was like, oh, I worked the overnight shift. I've never been interviewed by the Washington Post before, so I was like, fuck it. I was like, give me an hour, and I like started rubbing water all over myself, trying to, uh, trying to uh, sober up a little bit. I don't know if it worked. So I, I don't really know what's going to go on right now. It's, it's, it's kind of a... It's kind of a depressing thing to, to put so much work and, and, and uh, energy and, you know, uh, into this, to this, to this album in particular and, and, and see it be, you know, potentially sidelined uh, if, if that's, the, if that's what happens. But um, yeah, I mean, we're just, we're just going to play it day by day, you know. Well, this guy, uh, Shkreli, has been an unusually big asshole. Um, I don't really want to get into calling names because I that's not my that's not my thing. Plus, I I have enough enemies, and the last thing I need is a billion dollar fucking super villain looking for me, you know. But um, I I you know I I'm I'm just I just don't want to be associated with someone like that, you know. I'll put it out there that if he. Uh, gives everyone the drug for free for 
uh, the next five years that I'll put my record out with him. Okay. And that's one record. If he wants the other one, he's got to put it out for 10 years for free. Okay. That's my deal. That seems like, uh, I would be happy with that deal because I want to hear the record. Uh, <laughs> The, the overwhelming support that, that everyone has given us has just been like kind of lifting me, my spirits back up a little bit, you know. Knowing that that many people even care that, that the record exists is good enough for me, so um, we'll get through it, you know. Uh, I, I don't, it's just another fucking, it's just another fucking, uh, a page in this fucking crazy ass cycle of shit that uh, I seem to be wrapped up in always, so, yeah. Ugh, I still need to throw up. Oh, fuck. We drank, a, like, a bottle of tequila last night at some bar. And then we woke up at 11 in the morning and played basketball. Brilliant. I feel great. <laughs> oh. Did I get you? Yeah. No oh way, my, man. his window is down. A tiny bit. I'm sorry. That's all right. I knew it was coming. <laughs> We're going to go sign a record contract with Relapse Records. Jeff was the reason that the band signed to Collect, and you know, ultimately the reason that the record's not coming out on Collect is because he, you know, did the right thing, and the band became uncomfortable with putting the record out um, even after Jeff had uh, disassociated himself from Martin. Um, I think that we still felt that the it would just become the story of the nothing record that the record had been funded by a pharmacy you know blah 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 we all know it that it had been funded with you know price gouged aids pills uh, and you know the record is its own thing and we really didn't want that cloud hanging over the album know. it's hard for me to even come up with anything because i don't even know what the fuck is possible you yeah. guys do some really next level shit we could also have the die cut happen on the cover where the actual like where the writing is on the album so when you slip it in all you see is the red of we've the got a staff title. here that yeah. gets the band that believes in the band um yeah. that was frankly pretty bummed that we were you know when i had to tell people six months ago that we weren't doing this record and who like literally uh cheered when um i was able to say last week that it's going to be on relapse um i really can say that the dudes that will be working on this record here at Relapse um, are going to do a better job than like anyone so, else could yeah. have. Shit, don't, yeah. Don't let anybody else know in the band that I got money. <laughs> Cash yeah. money, dude. Hey, Kyle, the, I heard... Uh, I'm going to the liquor store. Sometimes you're just... You want the chaos to end. You want it, you know? You get so sick of dealing with, like I said, one thing after another, and there's no... There's no pause in anyone's life ever. You can't take a time out from your life. It just goes and it goes until it doesn't go anymore. All right, so I had a pretty terrible tragedy happen a few days ago. My, uh, my dad happened to pass away um, in a really horrible, like, random, like, terrible accident. Um, 
just like a few days ago. So, um, I've been trying to like dig up songs and things like that for um, something to kind of remember him by. Hey, uh, Jeffrey, can you cut the reverb off of this? Because it's, eh, that's good. I want this to be as ugly as possible. <laughs> but this is a Leonard Cohen song, and this song is called Famous uh, Blue Raincoat. If you know it. It's four in the morning, the end of December. I'm ready me now just to see if you're better. New York is cold, but I love it. Like where I'm living, there's music on Clinton Street all through the evening. I hear that you're building your little house deep in the desert. You're living for nothing now. I hope you're keeping some kind of record. I mean, without sounding like terribly cliche, it's just, uh, you know, that's, that's, what, that's what life is, especially to me. I mean, it's, it's just like, you know, a whole lot of pain and punishment mixed with like times that you can, you know, either inspire from that punishment and create something that matters to some people that might, you know, help somebody out that's feeling that way down the line or have it mean absolutely nothing like most things do.